this is the main house. This house is a combination of rammed earth and straw bale. The main outside circle, the bottom half is rammed earth. We did it Khalili style. He's an Iranian architect and he basically, we took bagged forms and created basically a giant coil house out of the rammed earth from the, the soils were here. Up above on the second story, it's straw bale and this first wing that comes out straw bale. All the, the doors and windows are recycled, all the wood for the ceilings, almost everything in the whole thing is recycled, even some of the plywood and stuff. There's old clothes up in the rafters for insulation. Was it July 28th? July 28th. Probably 90 degrees today at the peak, maybe a little warmer. And I'm sweating. I think it's warmer than that. Warmer than that, and it's mm -hmm. probably 72, 73 degrees in here. And, yeah. And very comfortable and cool. Yeah. So the, the, uh, there's a you know, passive solar architecture has two components. It has the sun that has the ability to heat up your house in the winter and the, or in the, yeah, in the winter and the summer when it goes higher in the atmosphere, your roof overhang shades it from coming into your house. And then there's the mass when, which can act to cool in the summer. And so there's so much mass, think of a root cellar that it cools it down, but you want to have a balance that in the winter, the sun can come in and heat up that mass just like a rock in the desert and then let the heat out. And so it's a big balance. And totally be honest, the, the difficulty on this house, I'd say, is that this becomes a root cellar. So the winter time, when you go to heat it up, you have to put a lot of energy to heat it up. Once it's heated up, it's good. You have to maintain it, but it is a balance. So I'd say on, on this house, the straw bale gives you insulation, but this building gives you thermal mass, which can act to cool it or heat it, depending on the solar. And that's been my experience. I've been here for two and a half years and summertime keeping it cool as long as you open it up at night and close it up in the morning. It stays really nice right around 72, 73 degrees. In the winter time, if you let it get really cold, it takes a little while to heat it back up. But um, at the same time, it's very quiet and very comfortable. So. Golden, we had an earthquake come through here in Paso that downed a some serious buildings in Paso. Um, the earthquake actually started in like West Templeton, which is very close to here. It's like eight miles of the crow's fly. That day, that earthquake happened. I was in the lower house and I saw the trees just shaking back and forth. And the first thing I thought of was that arch right here. If you spin around, there is no rebar in that arch. That's a true load bearing arch, which is like, it's called a keystone arch, which is totally impressive and you'll see very little cracking. This is cosmetic. That's not something to be worried about. That's cosmetic. But basically, the layers of rammed earth come into here like this, and then you take a bag of rammed earth and you do a keystone, and it sh it's tighter on the bottom and the top, and then they all fit in, and they press against each other to make themselves stronger. And I built this arch maybe five times. Not built it, but the last keystone I did like five times. It tells like, okay, it's perfect. But this tells you. I mean, this is all the native soils. This is a round house. It definitely helps it's round. And there's a fair amount of um, the rock that we quarried from here under the footing. But that earthquake went through here and there's absolutely no damage to the house. So load bearing straw bale and load bearing this. And if it falls in tomorrow, <laughs> he's got full disclosure. <laughs> And he was building high rises in LA, high rises in Iran. And one day he freaked out and he's like, everything I build makes people sick. All the resources it takes to build buildings make people sick and the earth sick. Got on his motorcycle, went around ancient Persia, um, started getting in with the whirling dervishes, doing some meditation. He went into where they used to do the clay and they go where they fired him and he realized that the building, the tunnels that the clay bricks were put in was actually firing the entire cave and so he started to you know meditate on different Sufi meditation stuff and he said you know the most important thing is the bowl that holds us and if we flip it over it becomes the house and he came up with this whole idea that we live in our bowl our shelter and it should be round it should be strong and he started firing he built um, schools in Iran and he would cover them in straw and then he'd take an oil tank and put it on the hill and then he would put like goat manure and these different things on the walls and then he would burn the schools for like two weeks straight and he would fire the clay. So the whole school became a clay fired structure that was strong with glazes and everything. So that's, that was the inspiration for that. But he uh, 
he started a um, an educate, education center in Hesperia, California, which is the mo it's the highest earthquake zone. And he thought that if he could make, build buildings that lived up to the earthquakes in California, that it would just spread. So he has now passed away, and he's a brilliant guy. Not a clue.